We're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, at the roll, please. Jennifer Harden. Here. Jack Miley absent. Belinda Grassi. Here. Tom Hag. Here. Steve Jeffries. Here. You all rise for the pledge, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On behalf of the board, I would like to welcome all students, staff, parents, and interested community members to tonight's Board of Education meeting. I would like to remind everyone that this is a meeting of the Board of Education held in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business it is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public comment during the meeting in the public participation section on the agenda. First up, if we can have, I will make a motion to approve the October 22nd, 2018 special meeting minutes, special meeting board minutes, and the November 8th, 2018 special meeting board minutes. If I could have a second, please. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hack. Is there any discussion? Call roll, please. Jennifer Harden. Aye. Belinda Grassi. Aye. Tom Hack. Aye. Aye. The motion carried. And that takes us to special reports. We have uh, three, actually, uh, today. And I would like to start with um, Chris Heasley from ICON. He's going to give us an update on our uh, construction. That's fast. Um, <laughs> you can't wait a little bit. I guess we'll start with Madison. Uh, the STS uh, facility and fields are complete. They've been tested. Everything is tested out. They've removed the equipment for the winter time because it won't be running. Just the pumps and that, just so they won't get damaged. From springtime, will be reinstalled, started up, running with the building. We have, we're up on the second story. We have the precast sets on both areas A and B for the second story. Area B, second floor, is just about complete. If we can get through this weather this week, we'll probably be complete by the end of the week. And working on area A, second floor. All the steel decking or roofing on area D and um, doing the steel and decking in area C right now. At Concord, all precast is set on areas A and B. All the steel is set in area D. We have some more decking to finish on the uh, gymnasium. We're finishing up area C. The steel should be there, the decking for that next week. And we're up on area B, working on the second floor up there, too. So they're moving right along. The okay. weather's not cooperating with us right now. Yeah. So just <coughs> today, Jim and I were able, Mr. Lewis and I were able to, to actually take a tour of Concord. And uh, definitely there's a lot going on. It, even today, it was uh, cold and brisk, and they were still laying block and doing electrical work and some plumbing things as well. But uh, things are coming along really well. Uh, it, you know, I know that we were all together about six weeks ago when we went through through Madison Avenue. And at that point, none of the the uh, uh, cast concrete was in place. It was all open, and it's you know it just didn't seem that big. It didn't seem that that uh, impressive. But with the the uh, the cast on, it really is taking form and, and really seems like a, a school building. So I definitely awesome. want to. Is your supervisor? Is his name Lee? Uh, Concord Lee Chesser, yes. Yeah. So so I want to thank Lee. Uh, we kind of showed up uh, unannounced and. Uh, uh, and he, he, he took care of us and took us through, and I thought that was really terrific. But, uh, you know, even though it was a chilly day, they were still laying block, and there are things that can be done, and, and uh, so that, that's good. I asked him what he was, uh, what kept him up in the, uh, the madness. <laughs> I, I, I was waiting for that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on, just say it. So, but, uh, I assume one thing he said was weather. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then, um, you know, in supplies and, you know, suppliers and things like that, yeah. getting, getting through all that. But, uh, so the one question I had, when we last spoke, and I, I went through the notes before the before the meeting, I think uh, the last meeting we were, what, 19 days behind on Madison and 15 days behind on on Concord, thereabouts. Is, what, what is your assessment at this point? We're, we're, about, we're about 20 to 25 between them, four, four, four to five weeks with both of them. So we've lost... Uh, with the wet weather of October and then this month we, we've lost some time yep. but we're, we're forging through that yep 
so, so one of the, and not to get too into the weeds, but um, obviously more block needs to be put in place. Lee happened to mention that there, there are different techniques that you can apply, the, the, the blankets and things like that. Uh, do, do, you, do you have any, any thoughts at this point on how things might c catch up quickly? And again, I don't want to take too much time, but do, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I don't, uh, nothing's going to catch up quickly in this weather. Um, we will be putting cold weather protection in place. In fact, we started that, and that includes tenting the areas that we're, we're building on the second floor, propane heaters in there. Well, once you do that, it's just, it, it's not as efficient. So, it, but uh, there's really nothing to do to speed it up outside of good weather where I can, I don't have to worry about that. Thank you. So, 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 move for, so basically move forward in, in small areas. You're working on the, the folks who are working on the, the gym today. Yeah, we're closing that up yeah. that last little bit so we can uh, finish the decking up there and get that done because we're planning on getting temporary heat. We're just waiting for the gas company in Madison to yeah. gas lines installed and tapped. We're just waiting for the gas line, gas company to uh, manufacture their manifold and bring their meter out so they can fire us up and we can start temporary heat out there and the same thing at, at Paint at uh, Concord. And under those conditions, you can bring it up to 45, 50 degrees. But yeah, I'll keep it within, you know, 45, 50 degrees inside there. It'll be comfortable work. Like I was talking before, once that precast heats up and the block heats up. Cheryl would be like, no, it's inside. Terrific. I yeah, when it's, it's it's two degrees outside, 40 is really nice and so right. <laughs> so once it's enclosed, that's when you're going to catch up on what we're behind it right now. That's that's the easier part to catch up on the inside. We're in fact we're moving pretty good. It's the structure that concerns me right now. Finishing that, uh, getting that done sometime in January with the roof on. The inside, I. I yeah, I'm not concerned about that. I mean, uh, there's ways I can make that up and I can be in multiple areas. They're already in there running duct work and uh, starting infrastructure and the plumbers in there. So if you go there, you, you, you today you've seen uh, they started. I know Madison, we have a good amount of duct work that's going up in here. So that's that stuff. So the there. big question is, we're still on, on time for 2019 school year. That's what we're shooting for. And right now, the schedule's showing we're about a month behind that. But that's what we're shooting for. Okay. Right. And so, you know, it's important. And I, I know that the administration is, is tracking it like a hawk. But, you know, at some point, we we need to figure out how we may, you know, Just. jump the gap between the, the buildings being available and the start of school. But but I, I know that's you've got a lot going on, and, and I know you're tracking that. So. Good. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Our next special report is um, I'd like to introduce our exchange students at the high school. Um, I did not know this, but someone pointed it out to me that International Education Week was November 12th through the 16th. So that's why we picked November um, to uh, showcase our uh, guests here at Riverside. Um, <coughs> Riverside is working with uh, AFS, which is the American Field Service, and also an organization called FLAG, which is a foreign links around the globe. And I had the pleasure of meeting some of the students in the back and, and telling them that when I was a senior, um, we had some exchange students, and I actually still keep in touch with them, and was able to revisit, to see one of them after 32 years of uh, correspondence. That's cool. So what I'd like to do, if I call your name, I'm going to go by your first name because I'm not so sure if I can pronounce your second or your last name. But we have two students from FLAG. We have Georgia. Georgia, if you'd like to come up. You can stand right here. We're going to get a... Uh, Georgia's from Scotland, right? Yeah. Okay, so we speak the same language, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy enough. Yeah, I feel like it's language. You couldn't have taken another country where you'd learn another language, huh? No. Is this the first time you're in Scotland? I mean, the United States. <laughs> <laughs> New York, Florida. That's person in Ohio. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, we're we're going to have some uh, update, too, right? As, uh, experiences, Jackie? Yeah. Okay, all right. We have Kendra. Kendra, come on up. From Brazil? Yeah. That's Portuguese, right? Yeah? yeah. How's your English? Good? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you speak better than some of my son's friends. <laughs> All right. Um, now we have also two students from uh, American Field Service. Uh, Pat. Yeah. Pat's from Thailand. And we have Farah from Palestine. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackie, uh, you want to, to start uh, with the students giving some experience here? Yeah, they're going to talk a little bit about their experience. About themselves and experiences here at the, in the States. You guys been here, what, a couple months now? Yeah, four months. Four months, okay. All right, who's going to start? Georgia. <laughs> it seems you are. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your homeland and your experience here. Okay, well, at home it definitely and skill. The main difference is like, so at home we have seven classes a day, but they're only 50 minutes long. And then, so we have two in the morning, then we have a 15 minute break, and then we have three, and then we have lunch for an hour, and then we have two after school, uh, not after school, so at the end of the day, and we start we, our first class starts at 9, but we have registration at 20 to 9, 8.40. Um, to like, check, just check if you're in school or not, and then the, our day ends at 3.45. And then like in school, we don't have like <coughs> sport, well we do, but like, it's just if you take a class, like you don't do it out with class, so like that's a big difference because like, Sports is such a big thing in school here, and like we don't have any at home in schools. Every time I see sports on TV that deals with Scotland, they're throwing telephone poles and big rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing the cheese wheel down there. <laughs> but uh, now, are you, are you involved in any other activities other than schooling? Here. Here. Um, no, I think I'm going to do ski club. Ski club? Yeah, because I ski at home. Um, but so That's pretty good. good. You enjoy your experience? Yeah, good. I love that. Good. Kendra. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So okay. I think the biggest difference like between here and my school in Brazil is that like we study, we can choose between subjects. We have to do all of them since ninth grade. And we also have like a class, so you're gonna study with the same students the whole year. And the class depends on what grade you are in. Yeah. And the extracurricular activity that I was doing here was marching band. Mm -hmm. And it was like a very good experience because we don't have marching band at home because we don't have football on the soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so like that. a nice experience too. And like I didn't even know how to play an instrument. <laughs> but they, they really like, um, they let me like go with them and pretend that I was playing all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very fun and like a, a good experience. What did you yeah. play? Trumpet. Good. Yeah. Um, what did you learn in English? I mean, uh, in school? English? So we have in the school, but I started with nine years, I guess, in a, like a course, like a kind of a separate school that you go and you only learn English. You speak very well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pat, can you say your first name? Yes. Tina Patmanisan. If you could repeat that. <laughs> well, what can you tell us about your experience at home? <clears throat> all right, first of all, so at so my name is Dina Park Manison. Or you can call me Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Thailand. This is my host family, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And in Thailand, we speak Thai language, which is very hard, hard than English. And the biggest difference in school is, I think, the rule. The rule in my home country is kind of very tough. For example, the boy could not keep their hair too long. Mm. If it's too long, the teacher is going to cut it. Couldn't put their hair down. Oh, really? You had to, like, put oh. it out. Oh, wait. That'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, 
So let's talk about it. <laughs> I am band-aiding in marching band. I am band-aid in <gasps> Riverside Regiment. Uh -huh. And I'm also aiding the special needs kids. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, they are so nice and so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite class in here is choir. Because of I got to know a lot of people and they were so nice to me. And also I got to know how to sing and how they like they sing together and very nice. Yes. You speak very well too. Thank you. <laughs> Farah. Hi, I'm Farah Sabah. I'm from Palestine and I speak Arabic. And this is my host family. Thomas and family, this is my house sister and my host dad. And I'm gonna tell you about the biggest difference between here and my school back home. Uh, we have just one day off, it's just Friday, but here we have Saturday and Sunday. So maybe you can see that <laughs> uh, What else? Okay, my favorite class here, I like math so much. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> And I, vol I volunteer in the special kids' room three times a week in my study halls. And what else? <laughs> well, I mean, we, I don't think we've had a group that speaks this yeah. well. No, I agree. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You guys are amazing. What else I, I have to say? <laughs> uh, have you been in the States before? Uh, no, it's my first time. First time. Okay. Is, is this school a lot larger? Like, is that very yeah. different for you? It's like so large. <laughs> so in my school, we have uh, nursery school and elementary school in the same school, but here they're, like, they're separate, all in high school, which is so different. So what do you, I'm going to ask each of you this question. We'll start with you at this end here. Uh, um, what, what do you hope to get out of uh, being here, and what are your plans for next year? Like are you a, are you a senior at your school? No, I'm a sophomore. I'm 15. Sophomore. Okay. So let's say after your schooling in Palestine, what what are your plans? I want to be a journalist so bad. So like I'm learning right now. Like I study hard. Like I want to be a successful journalist. I hope so, but like it's expensive. So before I came here, I'm in senior in my school in Thailand, and I also am senior here. But I want to graduate here, just walk in with them and graduate with them because maybe I have a chance to repeat a year in Thailand if I go back. But if I can be able to graduate here, I, I, I don't need to repeat a year in Thailand. And I want to be an air hostess in the fight atten attendance. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. air hostess. Okay, <laughs> and um, I am a senior in Brazil, so this is my last year. Um, but here, I am registered like a junior. I think because of the most, like the most um, subjects that I do here from junior, um, junior classes. And um, when I come back, I'm gonna have to do a test to kind of validate my year here because it's my last year. So, and if I pass on the test, I don't have to repeat this year. <coughs> Yeah, and I, I'm thinking about being a doctor or a dentist. Yeah. Um, so I'm a junior here, but I hope I'm like that it would be my last year as well. And like when I go home, I want to go to university to do criminology and psychology. So I do psychology here, but like we don't have that class at home. So hopefully it'll help me get an E and A when I get home. Oh, um, nice. What's your what's your um feeling about the food here. Not 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 that it's school. <laughs> yeah, the director of food. <laughs> <laughs> said, generally speaking yeah. compared to your food at home. It's not much different from my like there's stuff at home that you don't have here but most of the foods you have here like we have at home. Like it's there's not appetite for me for me it's a little bit different. Like I feel like here is a little bit more industrialized. More what? A little bit more just choice. Yeah, and we don't eat too much like spicy. So it's kind of different. Yeah. In my country is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because in my country the main the main food is rice. We have rice every meal and most of food is very 
spicy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And vegetable a lot. But here like butter, <laughs> cheese. Finally, <laughs> 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 favorite food. Uh, the food here is so so different. But, like I like it. No, mm -hmm. not a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and like the method in my country is like a lot of rice and a lot of meat. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, we want to thank your host families too yes. for allowing our thank students to have this experience. We bring a lot to our school, and we really do appreciate it. We hope that you build a lot of different memories here and come back, come visit again. We have the opportunity. Thanks, Mr. Kalis, the other two host families, um, Kendra and Geo, Patton's and Buckholz. Okay. Right. You want to introduce them? Uh, Patton and <laughs> <laughs> right. well, Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> I have a. Uh, our director of people uh, nutrition services Michelle Gifford she's been a, a director for about three and a half years or so but she's been in our district for 10 years and she'll give the uh, board uh, and the community a brief update on our program I know, right? Uh, I love to see all the things that they find different. Mm -hmm. That's where you need a 30 minute commercial break. Yeah. yeah. 30 minutes? Seconds. Seconds. <laughs> I was going to say, 30 minutes. What TV channel do you watch? <laughs> 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 he goes to sleep during Giant commercial. Giant infomercial. He's <laughs> 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 turning another one. Yeah. Oh, he's over? Yeah. From an addition or just here for I the meeting? It's really just your phone, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Belinda found it. What's that? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we found that while we were going through our EEF stuff. We did. I determined I... Look, there was a beaver on the back shelf, and so... Really? Oh, we're going to put another edition up there. <laughs> I don't want it in my house. See, Coach Borst didn't get a... Somebody thought Coach it was a giant rat. Yeah, the Kenston. Oh, you did? Yeah. Kenston. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. that. Did you see it? Yeah. 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 He did. He had a couple others, though. Did he? Yeah. I read my report. It's on my table, like in the middle of the night, and it's grand. Yeah, he's going 13-1 in the state championship. Yeah. It's quite the season. It was only Chardon that beat them. Yeah. yeah, and they beat Chardon. They beat us, so we were yeah, trying. So it makes us even. Yep. Yeah, track champions. Cool. Oh, he's starting all over again, Michelle. stuck on <laughs> Would you like me to, I mean, I can yeah. go into my report, yep. I have some items, might as well do that while we're waiting. Oh, my thing's Yeah, yours, yours will be. Okay. Um, we, um, we have much. You're going to superintend this report? Yeah. Do you want to do old business and new business, or just actually move through this stuff first? Um, and we can just keep going through the. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, always going over the agenda. Yeah, that's going to be a judge. Just go to the superintendent because you just update why they work on the team. Yeah, yeah. Old business. Okay, so old business. Does anybody have any? Nope. Any new business? Um, can I? Is this a good time to ask what we might be doing with the Chromebooks? Uh, yeah, we're going to have a discussion with IT about um, how we handle that. We haven't, you know, now that we're phasing out right. those Chromebooks at this point, we're going to look into what our options are and how we can coordinate the, what we can do with those Chromebooks. Because um, I would think that some people might be interested in Purchasing. taking one of those off of your hands for a nominal price. Yeah. I mean, you know. For years and years yeah. ago, we, we had old desktops that I think we were. Right. Get a trash and we sold them for like five bucks yeah. to anyone who wanted them. Right. And, and the only reason I asked that is because, like, shoot, I would take some, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. kids going to school. We'll have a discussion about that. And we actually have uh, 
our IT people presenting next month's okay. board meeting, I believe. Yeah, there we so go. hopefully we'll have an answer back okay. for you for that month. We can even, if mm -hmm. there's any questions or things you want to discuss, we mm -hmm. can discuss a little bit. That'd be cool. Great. And then we are at this point maintaining our inventory of, of Chromebooks. It's just we're getting rid of old inventory or? Right, because we purchased a, a new bunch uh, earlier this summer. Yeah. And then now they're starting to phase out. Some of them are not really usable anymore, but you know, there's the ones that are starting to phase out that you know, what do we do with them at that point? I think it's the current seniors are the ones that have the first ones that they got they've had the mm. whole time since they've so. been like in sixth grade or whatever grade it was when they got them. Because Marco said he's got he's had his the whole time and he always gets the same device back every year. Right. I was like, Oh, I take mine, you know. Sure. These are way lighter and easier to cart around in, in college than like, a nice computer. Right. Okay. Cool. Anything else for any business? All right. And that takes us to the Board of Education Committee and Liaison Reports. First one is the Superintendent's Business Advisory. Our next meeting is December 5th, next week at 7 a.m. That's correct. So we'll be meeting there. and 7 a.m.? Yes. Mm -hmm. 7 a.m. Wow. Wow. Uh -huh. They took my meeting. <laughs> right? Super. So. We've always had it in the evening. Yeah. yeah. We thought well, we'd do it in the morning. People can wow. come and uh, go to work afterwards. Yep. So that is what we got going on with that. Six. Uh, curriculum programming and boosters. Mr. Miley is not here. Who else is on curriculum? I am on curriculum, but we have not had a meeting uh, for the past couple months. Uh, me and Mr. Molly would talk, and maybe we could set up a meeting sometime next month. But nothing scheduled at this time. Okay. Um, finance and audit, personnel, strategic plan? I don't think we've had a meeting since our last board meeting, but we have a, um, a meeting on Tuesday at 7 a.m. Right. I, that was part of my um, report as well. We have business advisory on Wednesday the 5th. That was the original. Right, that was the original date of our meeting. So we are confirming back. Tuesday. Tuesday the 4th, it's on my, yeah, it's on my okay. calendar. We have to put a notice No, we're going to have it the 5th at, you know, 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And that works for town as well, the, the 4th, December 4th at 7 a.m.? Which is Tuesday. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I think we had it confirmed on that. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I think I have it on my calendar as the, as the four. I didn't bring my yeah, other calendar. It's, it's, but, it's, but if it hasn't changed, then I'm, I'm good. It's in my calendar. I saw it. We originally scheduled it for the 5th. It, okay. it, it was the 5th. We moved it to the 4th. For the recently or a long time ago? A while back. A uh, like couple weeks ago. Week. All right. Let me, let me, let me do as I always do. Send myself an email <laughs> so that I can um, look that up. But I'm, I'm pretty sure we're good. I swear you thought it, you said it was fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, otherwise we would not I apologize for not bringing my other... My other so. uh, <coughs> um, other than that, I have nothing. Okay. To buildings and grounds then, operations, legislative, Mr. Hack. Sure. So you, everybody heard the update mm -hmm. of what's going on with the, the buildings. Um, obviously, uh, at some point, you know, we'll have to, to figure out if this if this uh, delay continues, then we'll have to figure out some sort of a, a, a stopgap. Uh, uh, strategy uh, for the start of school, but uh, that's certainly doable. And I will tell you that the, the folks are working hard. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's challenging. It's it's open to the air, so it's you know it's wet and damp, and people are still working. So yeah, they had uh, a lot of weekends scheduled, and it kept raining every Saturday yeah. and Sunday. Yeah. They had one weekend they were going to come in both days, and we, we got rained out completely. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, the weather just is not cooperated at all. So. Northeast Ohio. Yeah. yeah. They, they said that they would give us a better idea around February, which is great because that's when we're developing the calendar. We usually bring calendars to the board in March. Mm -hmm. March. Okay. We'll have a couple different options if we have to push it back. We're already about a week after start. We start a week after just about everybody around. Um, if we push it back to the second, it's not going to kill us. Okay. So we'll have to figure that out. We, we will have a meeting in December. I, I believe it's scheduled, but I honestly can't remember the date. The board meeting? No, I'm sorry, the buildings and grounds for oh. December. But uh, yeah, I'll look. Um, but I am pretty sure it's already on the book. I just don't have the, the right calendar. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Mr. Jeffries, policy and alumni? Uh, policy, there's nothing new to report. We have not had a meeting. I know that uh, the first readings are. It's in my uh, report. Again. report. Okay. We have to set one up. We, we want to get the first reading in, um, in uh, December. Uh, second in January. There's some time sensitive policies that need to be in place by February. February. Okay. So. Can you send those policies 
Yeah. Soon. Just like you're working on just advance. about finishing them up. Okay. Yeah, because Debbie was working on those today. It's a bigger batch. So she's almost ready to. We and then we can set up. Because it takes a while to read them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And <clears throat> alumni, uh, there's nothing new to report under there as well. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Then we will go back to special reports since that looks like we are up and running. Yeah. Good evening. Um, as Mr. Kayla said, my name is Michelle Gifford. I have been with the district for 10 years. This is my 10th year, actually, and my fourth year as the director of nutrition services. When the previous director left, um, who happens to be here? Yeah. Um, <laughs> she came back. Administration um, was willing to give me the opportunity to prove that I could um, do the job. So uh, I had started taking classes prior to um, getting the position and it was understood that I would finish, which I will do in two weeks. Um, I know, yeah. Okay, I congratulations. So, That's true. I'll uh, finish my fourth year and Good. finish my degree. So this says it's an update. It's really kind of an overview uh, of the department. Just some things that I thought were important for people to know. Uh, this, our department provides free or reduced price meals to over a thousand students in this district and another 300 at Fort Worth Harbor. So 1,300 students in the two districts who receive some sort of benefit um, for their meals. We operate 11 kitchens in two districts. We employ 32 staff, not including lunchroom assistants. Uh, they technically don't fall under my supervision. We, are, we work in partnership with Student Services to operate the Beaver Bistro on the Riverside campus, and this year we actually added a little something to it. Um, the students were making cookies and selling them during certain blocks of the day, and that was going over well. They sell coffee, and this year we found out that one of the students wants to be a vending machine loader guy when he grows up. <laughs> All right. So we purchased a new vending machine, um, ironically enough, and Mrs. Mattern, who's the manager of the Riverside and John R. Kitchens, uh, gave that student that task, and he now loads our vending machine several days a week. So he's learning a job skill. It's taking a little responsibility off of Mrs. Mattern, and everyone's happy, mm -hmm. so it works well. Um, we work with the football team to provide milk for the players during summer conditioning and camp and after practices. Uh, we just add it to our order um, and the athletic department purchases that so this, the players have their protein after practice. We provide catering services for in-house and external groups um, and we are 100% self-supported and take no money out of the classroom from the general fund. We pay payroll, um, all of our expenses, everything out of um, our fund. A little bit about the program. The main objective of our department is to provide healthy meal options for the students in our district at an affordable cost while maintaining compliance with the USDA guidelines, of which there are many. Um, our program is an offer versus serve program. So what that means is there are five components to their meal at lunch. We offer all five of them. They're only required to take three, one of which must be a fruit or vegetable. Um, all buildings provide breakfast. It is available to all students. We follow all food and beverage guidelines uh, set forth by the USDA. Um, we do get commodity and fresh fruit and veggies from the government at a reduced rate. The fresh fruit and veggies, funny enough, come from the Department of Defense. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about that. So yeah, the, the it, Department of Defense. Uh, yeah, it, it, they're all kind of you know, government entities, the USDA, the Department of Defense, the, they all work, I guess, together. All right. So uh, that's how that works. Amen. Our staff is the most important part of our department because without them, the students wouldn't eat. Um, you know, they're dedicated, they're here every day. All of our staff must have continuing education units depending on their position. Um, so like, I have to have 12, managers have to have 10, and it goes down the line based on their position. All managers are members of the School Nutrition Association and some of our assistant cooks are as well. All kitchen managers, substitute managers who fill in and the director are level two serve safe certified by the Lake County General Health District. It's a two day course that we take um, to get us certified to be a per person in charge basically in the kitchen. Many of our staff have over 20 years of service within the district. Some have over 30. 
Um, Nancy Cunningham on the bottom there, she's at LaBooth's Kitchen. She was actually a lunch lady at John R. when I attended here. <laughs> so she's, um, she's been a staple in the district. We, we have ever-changing regulations to school food service. It seems like every year they come out with something different that we have to do or change. And our staff has adapted very well. They take whatever change I throw at them and they run with it and they make it work. This year they had to learn an entire new point of sale system. We transitioned over to Infinite Campus. They did that in two half day sessions and they came in the first day of school knowing that it could be a bit of a cluster um, and it was. Uh, <laughs> Infinite Campus happened to go down <laughs> the first day of school. <laughs> um, but again, they muddled through, they did it, they served all the kids um, and now at the end of November, it's pretty much old hat to them. You know, we don't have a lot of issues. They must maintain detailed records of food prepared, serving sizes, and food served each day. Each kitchen has production records. If you were to see Mrs. Manners from the Riverside Kitchen, you'd be a bit overwhelmed because she serves multiple entrees every day, plus all of the assortment of sides and sandwiches and things. And she has to account for every single serving that she prepares and serves. So when we're audited this year, which we will be, I am up for an administrative review from ODE, they will come in and they will compare our numbers. And if it shows that we serve 340 meals, then those production records have to show that there was enough food to provide that many meals for that day. They love their students. They continually go the extra mile. Um, the picture on top is from Leroy Elementary. Um, the manager there decorated for fifth grade graduation last year. She typically decorates for each season and she gets the kids involved um, in latchkey to help color the pictures and glue things on for her. The bottom is uh, Mrs. Southworth. She's the manager at Hale Road and that is Valentine's Day and she cuts her corn dogs into hearts oh, so <laughs> <laughs> for the students. Um, it's a during, <laughs> during Dr. Seuss week, she uh, does make good eggs and ham sweet. as well. Um, and you know, she's always doing fun things for the kids. And then the other picture is, um, we had an abundance of strawberries from the DOD. And uh, Mrs. Sullivan at LaMuth made the kids um, strawberry shortcake one day, which was a big hit. Some things we do that people may not be aware of, our department prepared and served the community when we had the community celebration for the new field. Um, the hot dogs were purchased through our department and several of our staff stayed that evening to help serve them. Um, the bottom picture is senior day. Um, when the seniors go around to all the elementary schools at the end of the year and they come back here and the high school staff stays late that day and they make sure that they have a meal and get them through the line and serve them so that they're in a lunch all by themselves, which is nice for them. <coughs> they prepare bag lunches for field trips, including the band's Disney trip. Before they go, uh, they cater meetings, sometimes at the last minute. That's Melissa. <laughs> 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 I think it totally was me. It always at the last minute. It's not always Melissa. <laughs> Sometimes it's other people. Usually Mary calls me and says, yeah. I know it's coming. Do you have a meeting? Yeah. Um, we order food and set up for the teacher's work day and first day back to school. Also staff appreciation. Anything typically where there's food involved, it's probably coming out of the Riverside Kitchen. Um, we catered the Alice training and the refresher course we just took before the beginning of school. So they do a lot um, behind the scenes to <clears throat> <clears throat> make sure people get fed, to make sure that the regulations are followed. Um, like I said, they love the kids, and I just wanted to give them a little shout out. So that's all I have. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. And congratulations. Yeah, Thank really. you. Yeah. <laughs> but you're happy. I was always told in, in school, learning to be a superintendent, that there's three things that always give you problems. They say beans, balls, and buses. And that's not the case here at Riverside. I have to tell you that our directors do a really great job keeping things off our, our desk so we can concentrate on teaching and learning. And uh, it's just a testament to, to her ability as a director. It was good when uh, Kelly was here as well. And uh, Kelly, I know, uh, mentored uh, Michelle for a long time, and it was uh, seamless. And she's doing a great job here as well. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome.
Okay, then we will go over to the superintendent's report now, please. All right. All right. I have a few things that I wanted to update the board on. Um, we have uh, March radios. March radios have been in our offices for about four years. They're emergency radios um, where um, if there is an issue in the building, um, any anybody can hit a, an orange button on this radio. And, and what it does is it um, it connects, un uh, it's un 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 uninterrupted communication with several emergency first responders in the case of a situation at school. And this radio system uh, has been in our district, like I said, for about four years. And each school has one of these radios in their office. It's managed uh, by the Lake County Telecommunications Department. Well, these radios now need to be uh, reprogrammed. And anytime you move a radio from one location to the other, it would impact all the other radios in the area. Um, so they're reprogramming these radios to the tune of $650 a radio. Um, we have nine that we need to reprogram. Now, one of the things I wanted to know is the fact that we're going to be closing a couple of buildings next year. Can we wait? Um, there's no doubt that these radios are very valuable to us. Um, and the answer is no. We have to um, update those radios or reprogram as well. But now we would have the ability to put them in other places in the district if we would like. We would like to get one over in transportation. And uh, after this year, I'll take one of the radios from the decommissioned school and we'll place one over into um, the transportation department. Um, the good news about this, the $5,800 isn't good news, but you know, it's not uh, outrageous. But the good news is uh, House Bill 318 was signed into law in August that um, appropriated $12 million for school safety initiatives in the state of Ohio. Um, each school would receive at least $2,500, um, no less than $2,500, but there's also a formula that they, would, they could use too where they, the state would give us $5.65 per student. Since we have over 4,000 students, we were able to get um, over $22,000 for the safety initiatives. So instead of taking this money out of the PI levy, we decided just to take it out of uh, this. And we still have $17,000 remaining for uh, safety training and, and other safety initiatives. So we're very happy about that. Um, Gary and I met uh, with the superintendents and treasurers from Perry, Madison, Painesville City, and the Lake County ESC to discuss the future of the Joint Financing District. The discussion concerned the ever-changing valuation of school districts and fluctuation of enrollment, and also the lack of the tangible personal property tax as well. And um, we talked about an adjustment of allocation uh, at this meeting to make sure it was more equitable and that um, the districts that are putting in the money are getting the same dollars out um, because uh, it's not um, what it used to be in terms of, um, of uh, the allocation. Uh, two districts are, are making a little bit more of a benefit. Uh, that would be Madison and Painesville City. Perry and Riverside are not uh, getting as much of a benefit as we should. So there was some discussion about having a phase in after a five-year period. We said that's too long. So we are going to finish out this uh, levy cycle in a two-year period, and then it's going to be readjusted where we'll be getting the money, close to the money that we're, the district, the community is putting into it, getting it back for the, for the district as well. Um, the levy uh, may be on the ballot uh, in November of 2019, um, or May 2020, or November uh, 2020, and the collection will begin January 2021. Now, when we were talking to uh, the superintendents and treasurers, we were a little concerned about it being in November of 2019, but it seems like most of them do want to go during that time period because they'll have three shots at It's a renewal. Uh, but would have three shots at it if, it if something happens and it doesn't pass. And by renewing that levy, it maintains the uh, the rollbacks that you know, they were in place from you know, before 2013. You know, because there were some discussions of what if the district went on their own, did their own levy. Well, it already going to cost you 12 and a half percent more to taxpayers for the same dollar amount because of the if you lose that those rollbacks. So part of the discussion was we all recognize that the, uh, there's a benefit to renewing and changing the allocation based on valuation it's basically having your own levy at that point anyways it's just it's helping maintain that those discounts to the taxpayers and the esc is responsible for putting that levy on correct yes 
they also manage the funds too, correct? Right, they, they receive the distribution of funds and they, they, they distribute it to the individual districts. But they're just going to do what the districts, the four districts, ask them to do, right? Yes. I mean, much, yes. yeah. um, the other thing I wanted to mention to the board, I don't know if you're aware, but Geauga County and Lake County ESCs are going to be combining efforts now. Oh, yeah, and it's my understanding that uh, Jennifer Felker will be the new superintendent in, for, the, for the area. When are they going to do that? Uh, I, think I think it's January 1st. Yeah. They're going to maintain separate as uh, separate identities, but they'll have a shared superintendent, and the Geauga County Treasurer will be the treasurer for Lake County as well. So they're going to, you know, kind of operate together, but still be separate organizations. So maintain the, it sounds like they're maintaining the separate boards, but they're administrative, administratively combining is kind of yes. what I'm... Yes. Yeah. And, and there, there was a discussion about that for many, many years, and now they finally decided to do it. I think it's a good idea. Um, I wanted to congratulate uh, Coach Boers on being named a finalist for the Bob Burtley Coach of the Year Award. The other two coaches nominated were Jeff uh, Grubich of Kenston and Tiger Laverde from uh, Kirtland. Jeff uh, Grubich actually won the award and he's well, well deserving of it. Kenston is going to be in the uh, Division Three state championship game this Friday against Kettering. And uh, Kirtland will be playing Marion Local on Friday for the Division VI state championship as well. But I just wanted to point out that uh, we had a great season, and Coach Boers uh, was uh, one of, I think it was, it's the whole um, News Herald area, and I think there were like 37 coaches. I think it was 37, and he was one of three. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, also I want to congratulate Kenston and Kirtland too, and wish them luck uh, this Friday. Hope they bring home a state championship since they are our neighbors. Yeah. And Kenston is uh, in our league. Um, Ward, uh, Coach Boers was the co coach of the year for the Western Reserve Conference. He was also named uh, co, co coach of the year for the Lake County Touchdown Club for the big schools. Uh, the other coach was uh, Steve Trevisano from Menor. Mm -hmm. So he's in good company there. Mm -hmm. In our league, uh, I wanted to point this out as well. We had four schools go. Out of the eight in the Western Reserve Conference, we had four go to the playoffs in football. Riverside, Chardon, Kenston, and Mayfield. And Brush, they take the first eight in the region. Brush was 12 and Madison was 11. So we had two others that were pretty darn close to making it as well. And, and I wanted to point it out because when we were developing this league, there was a lot of concern about whether or not uh, it would be too tough or or that uh, some of the smaller schools wouldn't uh, be successful. That's not the case. Kenston, Chardon are the smallest schools in the, in the uh, conference, and they do quite well. But the point is, we knew that strengthening the league uh, would allow more schools to go to the playoffs, and that, you know that's what they strive for. It's a very competitive league, and we're very proud to be part of it. Um, <clears throat> There's also discussion about the possibility of suspending the uh, Riverside Harvey game. Um, nothing's been decided yet. There's been some meetings with their uh, administration and, and our administration as well. And um, I hate to see it go because of the tradition, but in terms of what these two schools get out of that game, it really probably should be suspended. Riverside has won the last 26 uh, years meetings and it doesn't do too much with us in terms of, um, uh, you know, playoff points. And Harvey doesn't want to play us anymore either, I don't believe. Um, they're the ones, I think, that initiated some of the conversation. And um, we're looking at possibly suspending it and trying to get the Riverside Harvey game the first week. Um, because what's, what's happening is, um, Riverside wants to play Perry, um, not the first game, but a little bit later on. Uh, we think we might have a better chance and maybe beating them by pushing it back a little bit. Um, but the, it's still in conversation, but I wanted to mention it to the board because it's such a, a big game in the area in terms of the people that graduated from both schools. Um, I contacted Crossroads as well uh, to talk about mental health services. I was in touch with Jackie Hoynes, who was liaison between uh, Lake Health and uh, school districts. We're going to set up a meeting. I believe uh, we're going to try to get to Crossroads at our meeting on uh, Tuesday <coughs> for the financing meeting. I just sent the email to confirm okay. for Tuesday morning. But I want to see what else maybe Lake Health can do for us as well. And uh, maybe with a couple more options out there, we might be able to find a model that we all agree that is good, would be good for us. Um, 
Does the health offer behavioral health services? They provide counseling, as my understanding, correct, Jim? <coughs> From what I understand as well. We'll find out more about it. Uh, Jackie did respond uh, to my correspondence actually about two hours ago. Oh, all right. and we're going to set up a meeting as well. Okay. Um, we're still working on the redistricting. Uh, we, we sent out sur to surveys to teachers to see what their preferences were. And our next meeting is uh, going to be on Friday the 7th. And uh, Mr. Half uh, has a pretty solid plan put together. We're going to take a look at it, see what we can do about tweaking anything that needs to be tweaked. And then uh, maybe in January, we can have a work session, roll it out to the board, and then um, January, February, send it out to the community so everyone knows where they're going to be going next year. And we'll, one other thing I wanted to mention before we go into our report card is uh, this is good. I mean, we, we, we look at best practices throughout Northeast Ohio, and if we can steal a couple of ideas from different schools, we'll do it. We learn from each other and, and take things from each other that are worthwhile. So, uh, Will Be Eastlake uh, did the same to us. They have a, a new program called Lunch with Blue. <laughs> and uh, beginning Monday, December 3rd, 2018, they'll be offering free lunch to law uh, officers who visit any one of the school district buildings um, in an effort to increase visibility, enhance security, and give students and staff more opportunities to interact with law enforcement. The district decided to launch the program. So, uh, any hat tip to Riverside? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so that's good to see that they're doing it as well. I think mean, you can't uh, beat having these guys come in, these men and women coming in. Kathy Beal uh, did email me and said that anyone who asked, they said they got the idea from us. Yeah. There's, 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 been there's been a couple other districts as well. Uh, that's good. Youngstown. Youngstown too? Yes, there's been a yeah. few. <laughs> um, usually in October, we go over the report card. We're doing it obviously in November. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the different indicators and components of the report card. I have to tell you that I am, it's not where we necessarily want to be, but we, we've improved um, quite significantly in each of our categories and we're actually proud of our efforts. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the um, direction of um, Mrs. Mrs. Malacher and also our teachers who are involved with the DLT and the BLT uh, level meetings, uh, having that sustained focus and trying to get better and, and trying to break down and, and, and looking at data to drive our instruction. Um, so Melissa is going to give a report uh, on this and, and uh, if anything, take out of it uh, the fact that we're improving. I think we improved in every indicator, uh, but one I think stayed the same, if I'm not mistaken. Three we improved and three we maintained. Yeah, one is uh, literacy. Uh, mm -hmm. We scored very high compared to the other districts in Lake County, and the gap closing, too, which we're very proud of. I need to say no. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to, pretty much this is going to be the same format that we did last year so I'll review what the indicator means and then I'll show you what our score was and kind of where we stand in the area okay so the fir one of the first indicator is achievement this is the big one this is the one that everybody looks at this is the one um, that looks at our student performance on the state tests <clears throat> whether it meets the criteria 80% passage is for the test so when you look at third grade English language arts and math we're trying to hit 80% on those and then how well students performed on the tests overall. So they're looking at the whole group. It's a component grade. It's based on indicators met, which is 25% of the grade, and the performance index, which is 75% of the grade. Currently, there are up to 27 possible indicators. We only have 24 because three of those indicators are integrated math, which we don't offer, one and two and physical science which has fallen off none of our students take it it's just because we don't choose that pathway for our kids we do algebra one geometry algebra two as our math courses so there are some that don't apply to us so you will see our indicators will be out of um, 24 and then the performance indicator they calculate um, by each student score is assigned a point value and then the points are added up and divided by the number of students so you get so many points if a student scores advanced, so many if they're accelerated, so many if they're proficient. So you improve your performance index by moving kids from limited to basic, from basic to proficient, from proficient up the ladder, okay? 
So this year, um, our achievement grade was, our overall grade is a C. Again, considering it's a component grade, this year our indicators met were eight out of 24. Last year we were six out of 24. And our performance index was 77.4. Last year it was 75.6. That's the other thing too. If you look at our performance index, like I said, when you were comparing it to other districts in the county, we're so much closer to Perry and Leonard mm -hmm. in terms of 78, 79, there's a big drop off after, after our performance index. And, it, and one more indicator met would, would put us into the B range. Is that a correct interpretation? Possibly. I mean, we, we could go that way. We could in, increase our performance index because it's a I component grade. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, got it. So there's a couple of different routes that we can go. Um, and we clearly work on both avenues with that. Gap closing looks at how well schools are meeting performance expectations for our most vulnerable student. So again, this is a component grade, and it's based on the academic performance of nine student groups against all students in the state of Ohio. Okay, So you cannot receive an A if one of your groups is not reaching the annual go goal. Okay. Our subgroups, we don't have all nine subgroups. Our subgroups are white, multiracial, economically disadvantaged, English learner, black, non-Hispanic, Hispanic, and students with disabilities. Okay, so those are our subgroups. And this is how our gap closing played out. So for our students um, who we have, you know, those smaller populations, we are doing a better job of closing the gap for those students considerably better than we have done in the past. So this was something that we were really focused on. Okay. This is really the great apprentice. That, 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 that was last that was year. Last year? It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Great year. Our third indicator or um, component is improving at-risk K3 readers. So this component is looking at how we improve reading for our students in grade three. So what they do is, is at the beginning of first grade, we test students and we say if they're not on track or on track. Then when those, that group of students gets to second grade, we test them again at the beginning of second grade and we see who did we get that was off track to on track. Okay, so it's a multi-year thing that we're gauging. Um, that was, that's the second bullet point, trying to explain it a little bit more clearly. Passing the third grade test is the ultimate goal. So if a student starts off not on track in kindergarten, they want to see at what point do we as a district get them back on track. And each year that they're not on track, we put them on a reading plan, and then we monitor how they're doing. Okay? So they, all of this goes into improving, that, um, improving the, the reading level of our students. So last year we were a C, this year we were a B. You can see I think we're doing a, a pretty good job. Our primary teachers have really started to drill down into what do students need and how do we improve that. Um, <coughs> Rich Schmidt and Abby Hartman who are our reading coaches, our literacy coaches have done a fantastic job and, and the teachers work very hard and have worked very, very dilig diligently to implement some of the new programming that we have. So I think it's all starting together. Sometimes in education it takes a while to see the fruits of your labor and I think we're just starting to see things move in the right direction. Would I love us to be all A's? Absolutely. Is my heart really happy that we see improvement in some of these areas where we have otherwise really struggled? Very much so. Is that been, separate? Oh, I'm sorry. Does it include our special populations? This is anyone who is, so remember, it's looking at kids who are not on track and moving them oh, to so on track. Okay, so it doesn't so it's right. all, so yeah. it really is. Mm -hmm. So if you separate the buildings, how is the score at head? I would not be able to tell you off the top of my head. I, I, I just don't know. I, so, so that's where we're deficient at, probably? More, more than likely? I don't know. I don't know that. Okay. I, you know what I mean? I, I, I wouldn't even begin to guess. Okay. But I could break it down for you. Right. I mean, if you wanted that information, I could get it to you. You know what I mean? Um, each building 
does look at their own report card, just so you know, and we talk about that. Um, sometimes Haddon struggles a little bit more in the achievement, but they knock it out of the park in the progress area most of the times. So you know what I mean? So there's the strengths and the weaknesses um, in each building, and they talk about that every year. Kirtland and Perry, <clears throat> not, not rated, is there a threshold that they didn't meet, or what's, what's that? There is. You have to have a certain <clears throat> number of students who are not on track. I want to say it's 30. I think it's about right. But I'm not sure. And so if they don't have 30 kids that are not on track, you that's automatically don't get a rating. That's a, that's a sub group threshold, too. Yeah. I think so. I can't, I can't remember if it's 15 or 30, to be honest with you. But yes, there is a number, and they just don't have the, the number that are not on track. Small districts, too. I mean, yeah. yeah. Sure. No, I, did, I was yeah. just curious, but that's the answer to this question. Thank you. Next component is, a pro, is our progress grade. And this looks at the growth. So like I said, achievement looks at whether or not we hit that 80%, our 80% of our kids proficient. Growth is, is the kind of sister to that. And it looks at, do our students make a year's worth of growth in a year? So you may be in a situation where your population, your students are starting years behind. And, and the argument there is, if I have a fifth grader, and they're starting at a second grade level, there's no way they're going to be 80%, perf you know, I'm not gonna get them to proficient on fifth grade material. So this component says, okay, we get that, but are you at least giving that student a year's worth of education so they don't continue to fall behind? So this is kind of the sister to the achievement. Just as important, and just gives another picture of what we're doing. Um, it, it is a component grade, and it's based on overall student progress. That's 55% of it. The progress of gifted students. Sometimes working with gifted students and getting a year's worth of growth out of students at that end of the spectrum can be much more difficult than making the growth with a student who struggles. Because a lot of times our gifted students are the students who play school well. And so they, we don't push them all the time. And so that's been a focus for us. Progress of students in the lowest 20%, so we just take that group of kids that falls in the lowest 20%, and then students with disabilities. So all of these get a piece in this um, rating, and it includes up to three years of data. So they're looking at trends for teachers and for build districts, buildings. So our overall grade was a B this year, up from a D last year. Overall, we went from an F to a C, Gifted a C to an A, the lowest 20%, C to a B, and then students with disabilities we maintained at a C. Obviously, we'd like to see some improvement in that area, but a C is not, I'm, we're moving in the right direction. I'm, I'm okay with that. Cheryl could maybe jump in if she wanted to on that. Again, we want to see progress, but the fact that we're maintaining and that, and that we're doing some things right. Maybe we need to, you know what I mean, we need to tweak some things, but... That's happy with that. You're doing a lot of good things, right? So we're just, do, you're we're doing, doing some good stuff. Just to make sure I'm understanding, and <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong. So, so the other score was just where you you are at based on on grade level, and this is looking at the population of of, of students who may be behind, and then the, the the gain that they have made in the school year. Not necessarily students who are behind, all students. Okay. So they do look at all students, and that would be the overall, is that 55%? So they take all students and they say, here's where they were, okay, so if we have a fifth grade kid, here's where they were on the fourth grade test, here's where they fell on the fifth grade test. Yes, based on these scores, these students received a year's worth. Worth of education. Uh, yes, a year's worth. The other ones are just whether the achievement scores just say whether or not you hit that proficient mark. So you could, if you have a really, really strong student, that student could have learned nothing in a year, but still hit proficient. See, okay, so that's those are that's why they're kind of sister pieces. You want to look at both parts of those. Not only do we want you to hit that proficient piece. But I want you growing a year, every year, no matter where you fall on that spectrum. Okay? Got it. Thank you. Uh-huh. Graduation rate. So this looks at the percent of students 
who are successful in finishing high school with a diploma, and, and there's two parts to this. We have a four-year and a five-year piece. I know it seems odd to calculate based on five-year, but we do have some special ed students who can stay beyond the four years and even beyond the five, and we do have some students that just don't make it in four. So if we follow up with them, if we finish up with them, that does eventually help us in our, in our graduation. And it's a, it's a cohort too. The, the clock starts running as soon as they step foot in here as a freshman. And then they follow them through to see if they graduate on time in four years, and if not, whether or not they're uh, graduating five years. So this year we ended at a B. Um, I don't, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't put the final grade up there from last year. I think we were a B overall last year. Our four-year cohort this year was a B, and last year was a C, um, and then our five-year was a B both years. You can see where we fall in that ranking. What are some examples of why kids fall off the wagon there? Uh, it, it could for any reason, there's a lack of engagement, and, and a lot of them we will withdraw due to overage, so they haven't earned the credits when they turn 18, they're not coming to school. So we're currently in the process of putting some programming in place, actually building a program um, to maybe identify at a much younger point and try to engage these students and get them through, to get them to want to stay in school till they graduate. And, and it's more critical now uh, than it was years ago. It's harder to maintain a, a, a good grade on this now as opposed to a few years back. And, and I have to say, I think we make more of an effort to try to draw them back and have them graduate than we did years ago. That's the thing, that's why it's so critical. We're putting more effort towards this, but our grades probably aren't as good as what they were a few years back. Is that students that are just in our building? Or is that all of our students over? Because, you know, we have kids that are not in the building. We have, you that know, If we homes. have placed them somewhere, then they are our student. If they have chosen to go right. so, somewhere else, right, like, right, like a, like a online school or well, like, does that depends. Include, right. you can be an online student and still be a Riverside student. Right. Now, you can think of that two ways, because Cheryl and I have gone back and forth about this. We can let them go to, I don't know, an ECOT. Right. I get that Whatever. that doesn't exist Whatever. anymore and let ECOT take our money or we can try to keep them as a Riverside student and let them go online and then we continue to keep the funding because they're still a Riverside student. We need to tighten some things up with the online school. It works for some students. It does not work for some students and we are trying to navigate through why it's not working and how we can better help those students. So, Approximately, how many students are, are taking the online version of, of Riverside? I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. It, it's quite a few. I mean, I, I see the list every month. I can't give you an exact number, um, but it, it's it's quite a few. Get, yeah, is it quite a few? Is thirty? Quite a few? Is hundred? Uh, I'd say thirty to fifty. Okay. Um, that, but that's a that's a that's a guesstimate at this point. I mean, again, I could get you the information if you wanted the information. The other thing about that number, and it does though, vary that, too. yeah. The other thing about that number is we also have students that do that as credit recovery. Right. So they may not be full time online students. Right. They might be taking a couple classes. So that list that Cheryl it's, sees right. may, may not just be. It's a mix. Yeah. So they might just have one class, like the list said for credit recovery, versus all of their classes online. Okay, and. And just uh, one more question, if I could, on, on the online. So, if, if a you know one of the teachers of Riverside is, is conducting the class, is it in parallel with an existing class, or is it it's a completely independent? Completely independent. They it, they really have no contact with Riverside at all. Right. Okay. And then, but the teacher who who is is conducting the, the online, no, it's, it's, it's not us at all. It's a no. it's a company. It's a company. Okay, so it's it's out. Okay, so it's completely outsourced. Yep. It's tied to us, ergo the, the, the student is still ours, but, but from an academic standpoint, we are not the ones, pr the provider, the grader, Correct. the anything else. Correct. And, uh, all right, I have one more question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, the third party provider, how, did, how can you give a quick nutshell on what that is? 
So just like an ECOT or a, I can't even think of what any of the other online schools K-12. would be. K-12. K-12. I can think K-12. Uh, Connections School Learning Academy, Academy I think is yeah. what we have. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. And that's the, the, actually the Lake County ESC mm-hmm. manages that for us. So they do, they sign the students up, the kids if they have questions or have a problem with the program, it all runs through the Lake County ESC. That's a service they that they offer to us. Mm-hmm. But Correct. they get a Riverside diploma because they're still Riverside students. Okay. Terrific. I won't ask you anymore. No, that's okay. You can keep it. No, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to stuff. Uh, next component is prepared for success. Uh, this looks at how prepared graduates are for future opportunities. So the primary measures are the college entrance entrance exam being remediation free. So it's 18 for ACT English, 22 for math, 21 for reading, or 430 on the SAT uh, SAT writing, 520 math, uh, 450 for reading. Whether or not you get an honors diploma, whether or not you get industry recognized credentials, um, and you get one point for only one of those things. This is the caveat. So you might have a student who gets an honors diploma, scores a 33 on the ACT, and I don't know, does, I, you know what I mean? You get one point for that kid. It doesn't matter if they fall into multiple categories, okay? And then you also get um, a bonus point three per student if they do one of these. And again, you don't get, you can't earn any more than 1.3 okay so you might have a student who um, takes a college class and gets a three or better on an AP test they don't score us 0. 0.6 right. they score us 0. 0.3 okay so you just get one from each of those categories or you get points for each of those categories so we're in a D we were at a D last year you can see across the board this is something that is all districts are looking to how do we improve so it's been a conversation among curriculum directors I'm not sure we had a really good handle this I mean this one is relatively new just within the last year or two so we're still trying to get a handle on what does it mean how does it impact our kids and how do we better get them to this point um, I want to get some eyes on the data see how accurate the data is just haven't had time to do that to see where maybe our shortcomings are um, Chris Bassage has, has some eyes on it too and has some ideas on things that we can do so this is definitely on our radar definitely on the radar across the board um, across the county things that we've been talking about um, some areas that we think we can identify for improvement um, so one of those I, we maintained am I happy we maintained at a D no am I really happy we didn't slide backwards sure <laughs> so look at the upside um, so this is just a summary this was the first year of an overall district grade and we received a C C doesn't make my heart sing but C means you're doing your job and we're doing okay we're moving in the right direction when you look at it um, Individually, we improved in three out of six component grades, which was a gap closing, at-risk K-3 readers, and progress. We maintained in three of six component grades, which were achievement, graduation rate, and prepared for success. So we did not move backwards on anything this year, which I think is a testament to how hard our teachers and our students have worked. Um, and then within the component grades, staff and students improved in the indicators and the performance index and then overall progress gifted progress and the lowest 20 percent so we are doing i feel some really really good things here and i'm super proud of our staff of our students of everybody who is a part of making this happen my final statement will be district report cards do not tell the whole story and there are so many awesome things going on at riverside that's why the state gives you the option to put your quality profile up you know nick works so hard on it every year to release that at the beginning of the year so that people can see yeah school's about education i get that part of it and we need our students to come out college and career ready but we need them to have well-rounded experiences to be healthy productive members of society and have that whole package so that is my Final, final statement. Is, is, is there one aspect that's not on the report card that you would highlight, just to give 
uh, those at home who are viewing a, a sense of what other things are important but not necessarily on the I see in our district for the for the first time in a really long time um, a sense of pride of being part of Riverside. I see it on the part of students. I see it on the part of staff. I see bus drivers. You know, Michelle talked about the kitchen staff. I feel like everybody thinks it's great to be a part of Riverside, and that to me that's the foundation for everything else that we do. So I. I that to me is it's just been a fun ride that's, that's great it really it really has been it's it's really fun to be a part of riverside right now terrific you say a lot of uh, a good school climate solves a lot of problems mm -hmm. that concludes our report all right that takes us to the treasurer's report please okay have a couple uh, quick updates here i'll let nick get the financial reports up. I haven't gone over financial reports yet this fiscal year. I usually try to do a quarterly. Obviously, October's five-year forecast, and I figure with five-year forecast and monthly financials, it would be information overload. So I defer to this month. Um, plus, also, I don't do it early in the fiscal year because we're still developing budgets, so it's kind of like, here's the expenditures, but how does it compare to the budgets? They're still not finalized yet, so that's why we waited till now to kind of go over this. Um, uh, it's a little bit small and I'm just going to point out a couple quick things on the financial reports. I post these to the treasurer page on the website that can also be found in board docs. Uh, let's see if I wanted anything. This uh, report here kind of shows all of our fund balances and um, I can zoom in a little bit. No, it doesn't that way. Usually you want to see everything positive in the current balance. Food service is a slightly negative at the end of October, and that's just because there's a delay when we get the uh, federal reimbursement from the federal government. From so, DOD. <laughs> <laughs> and then so those, that's tip, you know, the run close to zero, but we, we've been uh, finishing the year positive every year for the last several years, uh, so that's not really a concern. Um, also, you know, the grant funds are on reimbursement basis, so they're always negative, and there's a cash request to, to recover those because uh, you can't advance yourself funds in advance. You, it's just on a reimbursement basis. And then uh, up in the construction fund, it's a little hard to see, but there's $29.7 million left in the construction fund and cash balance, and I have another report I'll pass out in a few minutes on that. Uh, this one compares our budgets. Uh, this is our appropriations that we approved in September, and then minus out your expenditures and encumbrances. You should typically not see negative balances here. You only see a negative balance here because of the advanced funds and you don't appropriate the return of advance. So that's just a little school finance uh, technicality there. So typically on the funds above the all line, you should never see negative uh, encumbered balances. So we're you know, well within budget and we're obviously still early in the fiscal year. So that's, that's totally expected. Um, this report here is showing the compares October this year to October of last year. Uh, month to month and also fiscal year to date, fiscal year to date. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but the main thing I want to point out is that we're over $8 million better this October in our, in our general fund than last October with, you know, with the, levy, the new operating levy that's fully collecting and some of the you know, things that have happened and you know, managing our budgets. We've really turned around our financial condition because having a balance of $3 million when your expenditures are around 3.5 of a month, it, you know, it's, it gets kind of, you're getting pretty low there, but it's just a, you know, it's an infinite improvement and we're in a good place as we kind of went over with the five-year forecast last month. Uh, this page here kind of shows our revenue report. These estimates I put in over the summer, they've been, they were tweaked for the forecast. I don't typically update them throughout the year, uh, but you can see, you know, property taxes so far we collected about 45%. If you remember we had the spike in the beginning of this calendar year because people prepaid their taxes in 2017 to get the tax deduction, uh, or I mean, you know, in, in the prior year as opposed to this year. So, there's a, you know, we're trending a little behind, but we expect that to recover because of just the timing difference that we pay their taxes. We had a lower settlement this fall. We'll have a higher normal settlement in, in the spring of 2019. And also this one point, interest revenue, I project, projected $175,000 this year in interest revenue. And we're already at 98,000 for the year. We're only, you know, a third through the year, so we expect to get, you know, much higher than what we originally projected there. And that's because interest rates in our Star Ohio account are up to about 2.3 percent, where just a couple years ago it was at like 0.06. So, 
you know, there's been a nice rise in interest rates, and with having the higher cash balances, we're we're uh, bringing that interest revenue. And just on expenditure report here, you know, we're one third through the year. We're trending slightly below that for salaries, uh, slightly above that for benefits. For contracted services, we're at 23 percent, so we're trending below our expectation. And then also supplies at 32 percent. And capital outlay, which is very small in the general fund, of 38 percent. So we're we're doing well within the budget at this time. So that concludes the finance report. And also, one more thing, just on our uh, our bond funds right now, we're actually we had a little bit of an interesting thing happen where when we first passed the bond, we locked in some investments at a high interest rate at the time. When now interest rates have swung so far, that we're actually getting slightly less. Mm -hmm. So as those investments are maturing, we're reinvesting at a higher interest rate. So it looks like right now we're getting a little bit lower at 1.97 than we would have if we would have kept it in Star Ohio. <coughs> but that's because we had some long-term investments up here in the uh, U.S. government agency notes, and those are maturing, and now we're rotating, and they'll turn around here. If you can see average maturity, we're well under a year, you know, quarter year. So just you know, keeping things short-term and taking advantage of the interest rates, and we've collected. Seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars of interest on the bond fund since we passed that bond issue in 2016. Nice. Uh, other reports. Um, RFQ update. We had conducted interviews yesterday with uh, four architect firms for the second phase of the facilities plan. Uh, we had one firm that was an easy elimination, which got us down to the three that we had to decide between. Uh, we had two. We knocked down the two firms, uh, Soul Harris Day. They're in, I think, the Youngstown, Akron region, and then TDA, which is in Willoughby. Uh, both those firms will be coming to the next board meeting to present to the board uh, what what they have to offer and kind of go over that. So we'll have that next month at the next meeting, and then figure out next steps uh, with those firms. Maybe you want them to know that. I'm going to. I'd love them to know tomorrow. I was waiting for David uh, Riley to draft the formal okay. and what the expectations are for those presentations at the next meeting, and so I was waiting for that before I informed them of, of who was selected. Uh, also, on, back on October 23rd, I attended the uh, the Cup Patterson uh, School Funding Meeting. There's a group of treasurers and legislators that have been working in a committee to come up with a new funding formula for the state funding for schools. Uh, because basically the f current formula has no rational basis that starts off at $6,020 a student. What makes up $6,020 a student? There is no rationale behind that. Tradition. It's just the yeah. uh, right. number that's been increased year right. after year. After year. And if you look at expansion for pupil, there's no district in the state educating a child for only $6,020 a student. So where that came from, it's just a, you know something that was an arbitrary number set years ago that's just been increasing with whatever inflationary <coughs> factor that the state decides they want to increase it with. Typically it's been $100 a year, but this current budget was $10 a year. So there's a new formula that they're developing that actually puts a rational basis and they're trying to determine what's the cost of educating a typical child in a typical school district. Obviously mm -hmm. school districts are very different, but every school district has a treasurer, every district has a superintendent, every principal, there's a principal in every school. <coughs> So there's a formula of how, you know based on class sizes and you know a kindergarten class size should have I think it's like 20 students you know first through thirds 23 some type of formula like that and they kind of looking at average teacher salaries and kind of calculating this is what the average cost to educate a child is and there's provisions in there for like uh, having specials and provisions in there for an EMIS coordinator and mm -hmm. you know provision in there for technology improvements so there's a whole list of things so they also wanted to eliminate the uh, state share index which is right now where the state reduces your funding amount based on your property tax wealth per student well if you have a any change in any of the 610 districts or 11 districts in Ohio affects the other districts it's all rational based on each other stripping that away and kind of basing you know figuring out this is what the amount of cost that cost to educate a child and looking at each district's current effective millage that they have in place and then kind of sense of reduction factor and figuring out what's what's the local share what's the state share it sounds like a great idea it puts some logic to it you know there's a you know a lot of positivity with it now will at the end of the day will increase funding 
probably not. You know, the state's limited funds, obviously, but at least having a method of where does this number come from and maybe something that can be maintained in future years instead of every two years is kind of like, what are we going to do now? Are we going to keep the same formula? Are we going to change it? What makes sense? So it's, it's pretty interesting, and you know, they're still working on some of the details, but they're hoping to have a, uh, some sort of proposal to the state for the next planning budget coming up, uh, you know, this coming in 2019, and maybe there's be some positive change, at least have, if anything, have a logic to the formula other than, than what it is now. And one of, the, one of the things also is to strip out charter school funding. And so, you know, for like any time a student goes to a charter school, we not only lose the funding we receive for that student, but also funds in the excess of that and, you know, taking a loss because someone decides they want to go to an online school that's not Riverside, and then we lose funding based on that. So it was it was quite interesting, and hopefully something positive will, will come out of it when it's all said and done. Uh, we just wanted to go over a little bit of a levy update. Uh, you know, obviously we had uh, on, uh, November 6th was election day. We didn't have a levy on, obviously, but there was several levies around the state that we were watching. You know, Lake County had two renewals, one for uh, Madison, and there's two levies for the East Lake. Those both passed. Those were renewal levies. Uh, there were several safety levies on the ballot. Uh, nothing too local, but there was Butler County ESC. They did a, they went for a financing district. It was a 1.5 mil levy. There was five school districts combined for that. That one failed. They only had 46.9 percent say yes. There was another. Brown County ESC, they also went for a safety security financing district. Uh, they went for a 1.95 mil levy that was continuous, uh, five districts. That one also failed at 35%. There was three other districts they went that just went individually on a five-year safety levy that we're aware of. Uh, Finley Schools in Hancock County, they went for a 1.5 mil levy. It failed 44.64%. Uh, Sylvania schools in yeah, Lucas County went for a 0.9 safety levy. That one failed at 41.21%. Uh, Adams County, Ohio Valley School District, that's a funky name from Adams County, they went for a 2.45 mil safety levy. That one also failed at 43.42%, which is quite interesting since being that it was safety driven, did not fare too well. Uh, Vermillion schools, though, in Lorraine County, they went for a 0.68 mil levy for safety and security, five-year levy. That one passed at 50.16%. Uh, the unofficial results were 932 versus 926. Ooh, so wow. that is a six-vote spread. Um, it's not quite a, a recount range. The recount has to be a half of 1%, but it's very close. And, you know, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the final, final... Right. Official results, but it was uh, very close. But overall, uh, it looked like uh, new levies didn't fare too well. Also in Cuyahoga County, uh, Beachwood passed the operating levy at 5.9 mills at 59 percent, but Brooklyn schools failed an operating levy at 6.9 mills at 47 uh, percent. Euclid failed a renewal; it was a 10.1 mill renewal at 48 percent. And uh, let's see, Parma failed a uh, 4.5 mil operating levy at 47%. Strongsville failed a 7.9 mil operating levy at 38.12%. But uh, Warrensville Heights went through an 8.8 .8 bond issue, 8.8 bond issue, plus a 4.5 continuous permanent improvement levy. So that's a 13.3 mil levy. They passed with 76.54 percent, which was quite surprising. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they I guess the way they structured it was it was only going to be a seven mil increase because there was something else dropping off. So the ballot language looked like it was a 13.3 mil levy, but it was really only a seven mil increase to do the facilities plan there. So that was it was quite interesting the, the election results for that. And then the last thing I just wanted to pass out. Uh, for the construction fund, the uh, first handout here, just an update on change orders. The uh, only change, I think, from last month is I approved a uh, negative change order of $8,200. <laughs> uh, 
and so I just wanted to pass out so you guys have the updated. More of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Not too many. Uh, and then sorry. Icon's working on, they're finalizing uh, a bunch of change orders as far as Thanks. there was the removal of debris when they first started. They have all the pricing yeah. from that. Uh, there's some front entrance changes that we made for safety. Uh, they're they're going to strip out the, uh, the glass portion of that to finalize the masonry uh, change orders. And then we're also getting pricing on uh, some of the window options for like uh, safety film and um, ballistic level uh, glass for the front entryway and, and first floor windows. So we're working on finalizing pricing for those and we're hoping to have uh, get somewhat caught up on the December meeting and know exactly where we stand uh, on the project so far. So I'm just going to pass out the, uh, this is the current budget of the construction fund and we're pretty much trending where we've been for, I don't know, for the last six months to a year. Uh, you know, obviously if we're, if we're end up demoing, demoing the three schools that are remaining will be over budget. If not, we will probably swing within budget and be okay. But it's, it just kind of depends on, sure. on the future of those. And once the uh, once we get past the holidays, we're looking to when can we start the process of, of putting those up for sale and, and you know getting appraisals done and, and all that stuff done and making sure that we you know do our homework and get get those uh, buildings at least ready for sale and, and find out if we can be able to buy them or if we're going to be demoing like those at some point. So, anybody have any questions? No, I just want to, um, thanks for going to the Patterson and Co. Finance Committee. I, I would encourage you to continue to do that because those two are really, really instrumental in what goes on in the state as far as funding for state schools and Representative Patterson is from over in Ashtabula and he was a teacher and and the more you have folks like that who care about like what's going on in schools down in Columbus and he's he's just he's really he's just a really great guy and I, I mean I appreciate people like that actually getting involved so yeah and they and had he, uh, meetings across the state there yeah. was five or six of them they held and the one I went to was at the Stark County ESC and it was like a Lake County reunion mm -hmm. right down there and seeing everyone from yep. Lake County, Cuyahoga County, and it was you know good turnout from a lot of districts and they had limited parkings. I think I parked about three quarters of a mile down the road in a mm -hmm. residential neighborhood and a walk. And by the time I got there I was a lot of breath. <laughs> but he's local and he's he's but readily yeah. accessible. Yes. So yeah. They're very passionate about mm -hmm. what they do and okay. they have a, a great idea going. I think it, it, it might be might be a good thing. Excellent. <coughs> All right, that's all I have. All right. That takes us to public participation. Anyone wishing to address the Board of Education will be recognized by the Board President. Speakers are requested to identify themselves and their topic. Comments are limited to three minutes. Okay. That takes us under the consent agenda. A consent agenda pro provides for more efficient use of time. Any board member can remove a consent agenda item to be discussed and voted on individually. Finance and audits. Um, the finance and audit, we have a um, motion to approve the items listed on the finance and audit consent agenda as recommended by the treasurer, A through E. Do we have a second? A second. Um, I'm going to read all the donations. I'm going to do that. I'm just, is there any questions on any of these? We've got the pay to participate fees for the cross. Yeah, and meanwhile then I will go through and I'll just read these donations that we'd like to accept. We have bricks um, from Raymond Builders for the Veterans Memorial. We have um, Johnson Funeral Home donated to the Veterans Memorial. We have Melridge Elementary, Tom Hack, Riverside Campus, La Cava Landscape um, donated to the Riverside Rocks. The other individuals donated to the Veterans Memorial. We have um, Anonymous that do donated to Riverside Rocks. We have Thomas O'Brien to the Academic Decathlon. We have Sherry Ross Niedercorn to Riverside High School Drama Department. Um, Tom Cotter to the Riverside Drama Club and Mentor Rotary Foundation to the Riverside <coughs> Drama Department. So we'd just like to thank all those individuals and groups for their you, generous donations. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to uh, recognize That's people right. of all facets who are graduates, including veterans. So very important stuff. If there's no other discussion, can we call the roll? Belinda Rassi? Aye. Tom Hank? Aye. Steve Jeffries? Aye. Jennifer Hart? Aye. 
Motion carried. Uh, personnel. That's also we have a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda items A through G. Second. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on these items? I just want to see on here. I saw in here that on retirements is Greg Miller, is the principal at Leroy. I said I, I talked to him today, and I was like, oh, I said after you know yeah. my kids, he's been principal for my kids for the last nine out of ten years, and we've been at Leroy, so wanted to recognize him. He's been a, he's a really, really great guy. He said I was like, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> you know, it's, but excited for him and spent a lot of years here at Riverside. He has. Anything else? All right, well, if there's no other discussion, come and call the roll. Tommy. Aye. Aye. Steve Jeffries. Aye. Jennifer Hurd. Aye. Jordan Gray. Aye. Motion carried. Curriculum programming. That's Mr. Miley, I take it. That's um, okay. Motion to approve the list of the items on the curriculum and programming consent agenda as recommended by the superintendent. Items A through D, I believe. Okay, the second? I'll second. Any discussions? No? We call the rule. Steve Jeffries? Aye. Jennifer Hardy? Aye. Glenn Grassy. Aye. Tom Hayes? Aye. Motion carried. Buildings and grounds? Motion to approve the items listed on the Buildings and Grounds uh, Consent Agenda, Item A, as recommended by the Superintendent. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Grassi. Any discussion? All right. Can you call the roll, please? Uh, Jennifer Hardin. Aye. Glenda Grassi. Aye. Tom Hank. Aye. Steve Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> and that takes us to the Board of Education update. Does anyone have anything they would like to add? I have two. All right. um, I just want to invite people to the Halls of Holly that's going on here at the high school on December 15th. I don't know what time that is, but noon to two. Noon to two. Yeah. Um, that is always a really great time. And I would also like to remind people that the Veterans Memorial has bricks for sale. Um, if they're thinking of if people would like to buy something cool for somebody for Christmas, they have a memorial bricks that you can purchase for to memorialize somebody that's good, that's a veteran. Anything else? All right. Our next meeting is December 18th here at 7 p.m. And with that, at 8.37 p.m., I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. If I could have a second, please. Second. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, Very quick. Yeah, sorry. That's that. awesome. Okay, well, please. Belinda Grassi. Aye. Tom Hank. Aye. Steve Jeffries. Aye. Jennifer Hart. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you.